be wounded too, but this is a women's meeting. And so I'm sorry, guys, but you'll just have to listen to how to heal a woman's soul, and it probably will help you go home and help your wives have better lives. How many of you want your husbands to help you have a better life? Amen. All right. I've had a lot of practice with the healing of my soul, and I know a few things about it anyway. And Jesus wants us to be whole, whole, completely whole. He died not just so we could go to heaven someday, but he died so we could have a life that's worth living while we're on our way to going to heaven someday. And you know what? We've all got a story. And your story is important. And maybe you're one of the ones who could give your victory report, your testimony of what God has done for you. And maybe you're in the process of watching God do something for you. Or maybe, just maybe, you're here tonight and you just thought you had to live with it. It's amazing how many people that even are Christians and go to church, I was one of them for a long time, who has no idea that God is interested in anything other than just saving them and getting them to heaven. And so I lived as a broken Christian for a long, 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 long time. And I think it's, it's bad to be a pitiful sinner, but it's really bad to be a pitiful saint. Because we are God's advertisement to the world. We're his ambassadors and he's making an appeal to the world through us. And so it's important for your sake and also for his that if you've never done it before, that you make a decision tonight that you're gonna go all the way through with God and you're gonna be everything that you can be in him and that you're not gonna live full of pain and secrets and regrets from the past, but you're gonna go all the way through and you are gonna be whole and you are gonna be happy and you are gonna be strong and you are gonna be confident and you are gonna hold your head up high and you're gonna make the devil mad every single day that you're on this planet. Amen? Psalm 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds, curing their pain and their sorrow. Isn't that beautiful? He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds, curing their pain and their sorrow. Now, your soul is often referred to as your heart or your spirit, or even at times, your mind. And it's really kind of some of all of that, but your soul is not your spirit, but it is the inner part of you. When you're born again, Christ comes to live in your spirit, and everything is just made good in there because he has to clean it up and make it holy or he couldn't live there. So. We're all taken care of spiritually. That's why we can say and not be lying that we have things or we are things before we actually see them in reality. Like I can say I am the righteousness of God in Christ before I'm actually doing everything right because I do have it. I'm just not showing it all yet. Amen? And boy, if you can ever get a hold of that, the devil is a thief, and he's right there ready to steal every beautiful thing that God gives us if we don't stand our ground and hang on to it. So some of the things I'm going to say tonight, you may have heard me say before, but before this night's over, by the grace and the mercy of God, and it will take that, I'm going to give you 10 points on how to have your soul completely healed. And if you follow these points, it may take some years, it may take some time, it may take some crying, it may take some going through stuff, but you will come out on the other side a whole individual with no evidence 
that you ever were that messed up person that you used to be. That'll be somebody that you feel like you used to know, but you're certainly not that anymore. Amen? I tell Dave, he probably feels like he's been married to 20 different women in the 50 years we've been married. <laughs> because we just keep changing and changing and changing. So, your soul is the inner part of you. And it's a part that certainly we can hide from people out here. Sometimes we even get pretty good at hiding it from ourselves. You know, I think one of the greatest things that we can do is know ourselves. I mean, really know yourself. And that takes a lifetime to really know yourself and to be honest with yourself. But certainly God knows us. And so it's very possible to look all together on the outside and yet be a complete, total mess on the inside. Has anybody gotten good at dressing it up and taking it to church and putting on your church face? But yet inside you're thinking, I am falling apart and why is this not working for me? The condition of our soul is not only felt by us, but it's also felt by all those that we are in relationship with. And to be honest, the biggest favor that you can do your family is to be a healthy you, a healthy, whole you, where they don't have to wonder every day what version of you they're gonna get. Come on. But you, you know, Dave says, I remember I used to drive down the highway at night and think, I wonder what she'll be like tonight. And I didn't know either until the devil told me. I didn't know until I got up and saw what my circumstances were gonna be that way, because if they were good and I was getting everything I wanted, then I might be happy, but I had no stability in my life. And there's nothing worse than being controlled by your thoughts and your feelings and what people say or don't say or what people do or don't do, or rather you get what you want or you don't get what you want. I wanna be happy all the time, not just when my circumstances are telling me that it's okay to be happy. If the soul is wounded, we often wound other people. Many times unintentionally, many times we don't even know that we're doing it. But that's why we run into so many people in the world and we think, what is your problem? Well, they're wounded on the inside. And to be honest, sometimes instead of just wanting to get away from people like that, we might wanna take a little more time to find out what's going on inside them because probably there's somebody that's bleeding on the inside and doesn't know how to get the help that they need. So I think loosely, very loosely, we can say that our soul is our personality. It's the way we present ourselves. And so God can heal our personality. James 1.21, I love this scripture, it says, receive the word of God with meekness, because it contains the power to save your soul. It doesn't say to save you like so you can go to heaven. It says the word of God is the healing balm that we need that will bring salvation and wholeness to this inner life, to my mind. I tell you what, my mind has been saved. Not just my spirit, my mind has been saved. When the Bible says to put on the helmet of salvation in Ephesians 6 as part of our warfare with the enemy, you know what that means? Learn how to think like a person that's saved. Don't keep thinking like somebody who's not saved. Think like a person that's saved. And then you don't have to believe every lie of the enemy. My feelings have been saved and are in the process of being saved. But I tell you what, I sure don't live by my feelings anymore, nothing like what I used to a long time ago. And even my will has been saved. Not just my spirit, but my mind, my will, my emotions. And I no longer have to do just what I wanna do because I wanna do it, and I don't have to get angry anymore if I don't get what I want, but I can actually now want what God wants more than I want what I want in my life. That is wholeness and real salvation. Now, in saying that, let me say this. It's been a long time coming. 40 years, I've been a pretty serious student of the Word of God. 
And I would say probably 25 years ago, I started getting some pretty major breakthrough. But it took time. I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to be honest with you. What I say tonight is going to help you. I believe by the grace of God that it is going to help you. I pray that the words will be so anointed that they absolutely have to help you. But just what I say tonight is not going to be the secret key that's going to fix everything in your life. Because here's the thing, if you don't go home and do what you hear, You know, Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and he said, I've done this as an example to you. And then in John 13, 17, he said, blessed shall you be knowing these things if you do them. <laughs> if you do them. And you know, we say, well, it's just so hard. Well, that's one of the first things we need to stop saying. Don't ever say that again. It's just too hard because it may be hard, but God is not going to give us anything to do that is too hard for us to do. He is the God of the impossible, and what God shows us to do, He gives us the grace and the anointing and the power to do. Everybody say, I can do it. Get up, get some gumption, shake that junk off, decide you're not going to live like that anymore. And let's clean up the mess and leave no evidence that you were ever in that kind of a situation. Well, Joseph decided that he wasn't going to stay in that pit. He decided that he was going to shake it off. And he ended up in the palace, second in charge to only the Pharaoh. You may not have anybody that understands. You may not have anybody that you think cares, you may feel like you are totally invisible in this earth. But let me tell you tonight, and don't you ever forget it, God sees you, He knows your name, He's got a plan for you, and if you will cry out to Him and believe just a little teeny, 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 tiny bit, it doesn't even take much more than a mustard seed of faith. If you'll just believe just a little tiny bit, He'll reach down in you there and He'll lift you up out of that pit and He'll set your feet on a rock. Come on, this is a night of hope. A night of hope. The Spirit of the Lord, Jesus said. Well, this is Isaiah talking about the coming of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, the poor, and the afflicted. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the physical and the spiritual captives and the opening of the prison and of the eyes to those who are bound. Now, you know, just about the time you begin to get just a little tiny bit of freedom, someday you'll be walking along and you can kind of feel that pit trying to pull you back in. No. I've spent enough time in that pit. I'm not coming back in again. No, thank you. You know, I, I spent a lot of my life in self-pity. I felt sorry for myself because I'd been abused. And I just felt so sorry for myself. I felt sorry for myself because we didn't have much money. I felt sorry for myself, you know, blah, 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 blah. And when I started trying to serve God and wanting to be a powerful woman of God, God said to me, you can be pitiful or powerful, but you're gonna you can take your pick because you can't be both. You can't be both. And I'm throwing that out to you tonight. Do you want to be pitiful or do you want to be powerful? And if you want to be powerful, then you got to give up the pity. God said, I'll give you beauty for ashes, but you can't keep the ashes and have the beauty. So I guess I got to say tonight, are you willing to let go of some things? Are you willing to let go of some attitudes? Are you willing to stop feeling sorry for yourself? Are you willing to be bold and say, if anybody can have freedom, I can have freedom. And I'm not going to shut up, God, until you bless me. Let's be like Jacob. I am not going to let you go until you bless me. I may have a limp all my life, but I'm going to limp off with my blessings. <laughs> Isaiah 61, verse 7. I love this. Love it, love it. Instead of your farmer's shame, you'll have a twofold recompense. 
Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double, double what they forfeited. And everlasting joy shall be theirs. Double for your trouble. Why? Verse 8, for I, the Lord, love justice. That's just the bottom line. God loves justice. Now, let me tell you something. I know that a lot of you have been through a lot of rough things. But you can let it make you bitter or you can let it make you better. And actually, the things that I went through, I had to make a choice at one point, but they've actually made me strong. I mean, I am strong. Strong inside. I don't quit. I don't give up. If I got a goal, I'm going to go after it. I'm strong physically. I'm strong. And you can be strong. But sometimes you got to go through some stuff, and in the middle of that going through, you've got to make a decision. I'm not going to park here at the point of my pain and give up on life. I am going to go through with God, and I believe this is going to work out good. Amen? All right. Point number one. <laughs> Okay. First point to the healing of your soul. You must receive God's unconditional perfect love for you. You receive it as a gift. You can't deserve it. You can't earn it. And I don't care what you do, you cannot keep God from loving you. Because love is not something he does, turns on and off. It is who he is. Who he is. But if you have a revelation, not a teaching. Come on, we don't need another teaching. We need a revelation in our life. And the only way that a teaching that I'm doing becomes revelation to you is if you go home, you take it, you get out your Bible, you look at it, you write things down. You got to put some effort into it. You, you can't just sit there and want somebody else to download a victory into your life. I mean, we love free downloads. Well, I'm going to tell you, this is not a free download tonight. What I have to say here tonight cost me an unbelievable amount of pain. And I'm very happy to share it with you, but I am not offering you a free download. What I'm showing you is that you can have the same thing that God has given so many people if you're willing to do the same things that they did. Come on, get up, make up your bed. It's time to have a life. How many people here tonight need to make a decision about going home and beginning to just be a little more tenacious about not letting the devil walk all over you? Come on. Man, I just might get excited if I stay up here long enough tonight. You are accepted. Close your eyes and swallow this. God loves you unconditionally. He is not going to love you anymore when you behave better. <laughs> God, God will never love you any more than he does at this moment right now because he already loves you with a perfect love. God loves you. Even though my mother and my father have forsaken me, the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his own child. Nobody in here is an orphan. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen? Sons and daughters of the Most High God. And I think sometimes it's how we see ourselves. If you see yourself as broken, if you see yourself as an orphan, then you're always going to be that. And I want to tell you something, if you're still in the pit, I know exactly how you feel, but I'm telling you, this is your night to come out. When Jesus walked up to the tomb of Lazarus, he said, 
come out. When, king, when the king went and opened the door of the fiery furnace, and he saw not three men in there that went in, but he saw four, because Jesus is always with you in your fiery furnace, he said, come out. And when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. And I'm telling you right now, it's time for you to come out. It's time for you to stop living like Jesus never died for you and start acting like the unbelievable, amazing human being that you are. Come on, give God a praise. If you want your soul to be healed, you have to receive God's forgiveness, and that means that you have to forgive yourself.